Hi guys, so today I have a few new sets to share with you that Dying Press has brought to HSN. I decided to kind of pair these up um, because some of them are texture paste and I want to show you the two different sets. And then there's two different sets that are stencils and I believe stamps, maybe dies. So um, we'll just get right to it. So these items were sent free of charge from my review and of course all opinions are my own. And any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links. So, what I'm going to do is open these guys up. We'll check these out. So these are texture pastes. Um, this one does say glitter paste though, so texture and glitter, I believe. And I don't know why when I first saw it, I thought it said texture glitter. So I was like, oh, well, let's see. But basically, it's texture, right? But texture paste is more of a gesso base. Excuse me, sorry about that, we got a delivery. So um, texture paste is more of a gesso based kind of thing. And glitter yeah, paste is. is more suspended in like, something that bonds it to your paper, but it's not like glue, right? It's not like sticky like glue. But anyway, so this one um, has grape in it, which is really pretty. It's more of a pinky purple. And then we have apricot. Lovely. It is very peachy. <laughs> it's called apricot. Um, this one we have a uh, sapphire. Really pretty bright blue. And then we have um, Sunrise, and it's more of a softer gold. I want to show you Apricot so you have the, see the difference in those. Um, I would say a lime green as soon as I saw it. It's called Lime. <laughs> really, really pretty. These are really fun colors uh, for Halloween, too. Um, these two here. And, well, I guess all of them, really. Depends on what you're doing. But Raspberry, which is... Um, a little brighter fuchsia. I'll show you this guy, grape, so you can see the differences. Where this one, maybe this one's more. A little fuchsia. That's what, uh, the grape had like a pink tone to it, in my opinion. And then we have raspberry here. Really, really gorgeous colors. There's some info there, just showing you how you might want to use the um, glitter paste. Of course, through a stencil. You know, you can just do backgrounds with it, whatever it is you want to do. This is the texture paste. Now, this one already has color in it. So, generally, I think um, Dime Press had a white texture paste. I I think they came out with a black one more recently, and then now these are colors, so red, super primary red, almost an orangey red. We have uh, yellow. <laughs> I don't know why I went to read the word, just in case they, get, they had a fun name for it, but yellow. Ooh, look at this one. Oh, that's so pretty. Beige. That's awesome. I love that. Can you imagine using this on like cards that have to do with like coffee or tea or stuff like that? Uh, that is really pretty. Um, cyan, a nice, you know, deeper blue, not quite teal, more on the blue side. Um, oh, here we go, black. I love the black, so I'm happy to have that, you know, in this kit. I think before it was with another kit that you would obviously purchase the whole, whatever it was. Um, like stamp die type of kit, so this is nice that it's in here, and then you also have white, your classic white. And you can color this stuff with acrylic paints or, yeah, basically with acrylic paints. Um, so it's good to have white. You can just do whatever you like with that one or use it like that. And then I brought these guys out because they're similar. I don't know if I'm going to, or how I'm going to use them today, if we're going to do two different things or just use stencils and things. But this one's called Groovy. <laughs> Stay Groovy, sorry. Stamp. Look how cute. The VW there. Of course, your lava lamp. How funny. Let's open this guy up. Okay, so this is a sunburst stencil. Let's see what all we have in here. Oh, I was taking these guys off the back. So cute. Oh my gosh. So you have your little uh, VW or a little, you know, uh, Twinkie type bus, and then it has a little um, a carrier kind of on the top. I forget what those things are called. And then this one's packed up with like luggage and a like, guitar. Super cute. Have a groovy birthday. That's just another idea. So, uh, finished card example, it says. And here we have some that are more beachy the lava lamp with your little uh, smiley face and everything, the rainbows and those beautiful little flowers. They're showing you how maybe you want to use a sunburst stencil to do kind of like this kind of groovy thing. Back here we have a stencil that has like little flowers. You can just put it all over the place or just maybe some accents. Um, the groovy diamonds by itself. So we have something called groovy diamonds and then groovy lines by itself. Um, and then you can pair them together, I suppose. So that's what those are showing you. But if you want to put them together, you have a really groovy background. And then um, <laughs> different ways to trick out your little uh, bus. That is so cute. So that's what's in here. We have their stencils. 
And these are a little more, kind of like accent stencils. Obviously you can do a whole background, but that's what they're showing you there. So we have the smaller one. The smaller one is like five by three and a half or so. And then these guys are almost six inches long by like two and a half inches wide. And then we have this little guy that's kind of like a place somewhere here and there, super cute. And then you have your stamps. I love the colorway they used on this for the presentation, really, really cute. Of course, your surfboards and all that, your little racks, your um, luggage, you have words like bummer, party, uh, road trip, dude, so those kinds of things you can put in the little license plate over here, or the VW. The size on that guy is about three by three and an eighth or so. Your lava lamp over here is about four inches tall. Yeah, maybe an inch and a half, a little bit smaller than an inch and a half wide. Super cute. I love, I love you. I love you lot. Sorry. Good vibes. Peace, love. Love the um, um, font they use on that groovy. And then all the different little words you can put in your bus if you would like. And then over here we have the Roaring Twenties. That's also stencils, stamps. Oh, hello. And dies. <laughs> So there are the dies that we saw earlier uh, for most of the motifs and things that are in here. The little luggage, little hearts, you have your little guitar, super cute, um, the racks and everything. Of course, the car itself, you have the dies for. So let me open this guy up and see what we got going here. Roaring 20s. Oh yeah, I can see these people look like they're dancing. And so we have the dies, and I can give you kind of an idea of how tall these are. Like three and a half inches tall on that one, that character, this one about the same. It looks like there's some instruments, some drinks. It looks like a little martini glass there. And so on this one, we have this really cool um, label, which is really nice. I love that you have the die for it. You have some stamps to you know, decorate that out. And then, I mean, look at the um, font on that. Really cool, very marquee looking cheerio. Congrats, thank you, happy anniversary, happy birthday, get well soon, hello, let's celebrate. You have another one that's more curved and it has things like sending glitz, glam, and greetings. Here's to another year together. Ooh, Ooh, those are small. Years. So um, in the example, you're not in the stamp itself, it says aces, you've done a swell job. You know, hope you come roaring back soon things like that and then we have our little flapper it looks like and then the little gentleman there dancing <laughs> martinis um, a record player going to those old school kind of cars um, you have lots of motifs really really cool uh, and then the stencils and you have some examples of what you might want to make with that so again with this one you have your stencils and again they are a little smaller so you can layer them up oh I love that it's so pretty a really cool design, very Art Deco, I suppose. And then we have this guy, really, really cool. And then these guys that are just, again, very marquee looking, that kind of feel to them. And then back here we have all the stamps with the really cool red and gold and brown kind of carriers. Again, the wording is not as small as it is on the examples there. Very, very cool. And then these guys, a very uh, thin line on them. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so the line on it is thinner, but they're a good size. Hopefully you can see that. And then the banner there and everything else. So really cool. Uh, what I'm going to do is put some of these things to the side, grab some papers, and we will start um, playing. So I cut some paper down, some yellow kind of orangey paper and some black paper. And I think what I want to do is kind of play with this here for the orangey kind of groovy paper. This is textured paper, so I'm going to try to use a side that's not as textured. And we'll start there. And I want to use an orange ink, which I thought I just grabbed, but I guess I didn't. Here we go. This orange. And what I think is I'll do, I'll come in with some texture paste with this one. But we'll start off with this guy. And let me see if I do that. This guy then comes in here, and then I'm assuming you turn it, right, to complete it. Uh, I think it showed in the instruction, but I already put that away. Well, not really put it away, but they're off to the side somewhere else. So right now I'm just going to kind of stick this down. 
and I'm just going to do some uh, inking and then we'll do the texture paste secondly and then also what was I going to mention oh this paper is four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm just trying to add in oops, some extra color with this guy I thought those colors were kind of fun and bright groovy as it were So I have that. I might trim this down. Um, it got hot, so I had to take my sweater off. I cannot believe how hot it is right now in San Diego. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. Uh, I just want to eyeball that and then see when we come back in with these guys. It would be like somewhere in here. Just trying to see if I'm about the same or so. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, maybe I can get closer, but this is fine. Okay. Okay, so we have that. And then I can use this guy. And I'm just eyeballing this kind of where it's going. Pretty much up at the top and the bottom is um, the same as I did before. Ah, here we go. So let me stick that down. I'm going to go wash this one off and then I'm going to grab some texture paste, the lime green one. You guys, I mean the glitter one. Right, we had a lime one. Let's see here. This guy. So I'll be right back. So I just grab this. And I'm going to be as careful as I can with this because we are going to use it in one area and then move over and then possibly even this side if you want, right? So i um, just going to grab some of that. I have a little angled spatula here and I'm kind of holding it down with my hand. That's just what I'm kind of used to doing. And you can put this on here perfectly. You can kind of play with it if you want to be a little more artsy. And I'm just being careful because I want to obviously move this over later. And we can leave that there. way. I should have brought out my smaller glass mat because that way I can manipulate this a little more on here. Okay. I've got some on my nail. Yeah, let's go ahead and try to get that back over here. Oh, that is so pretty. I'm going to clean this off as best I can, kind of just going like this. And I'm going to wipe it down so I can move it over and not be worried that I have some glitter on the back. It looks pretty good, actually. Let me see if I can just... Oopsie. Let me move that off there. That cleaned up very easily. Uh, I'm trying to see where it would be if I put this on here. It would be that midsection, huh? Okay, I'm just going to wait, I think. Because if I put this here... Actually, we could... Yeah, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait for that to set up just a little bit longer. That way I can come in here. Actually, okay, I'm sorry. I'm being wishy-washy. I have no room for that here. There we go. You know, we love changing our minds. Okay, so again, I'm just going to hold it. Now, if you're afraid to do this, definitely wipe it off and then, you know, start again. But I'm just going to bring this in here. All the way down to the bottom. And pick it up carefully. Ooh, that looks awesome. Uh, so I'm going to clean this off and then just finish up this side. Basically what I just did, just put it there. 
and then just finish this little section, okay? And I'll bring so it back. I'm gonna finish this up this other side, but really what I should be doing is bringing back the stencil that's wavy and finishing it off here because the waviness comes in here. If I try to pair it up with this, it doesn't have a place to go. You know what I'm saying? Because the other one should be kind of here. So I'll probably just cut that side off whenever I cut this down. And um, so there is. So I'm going to clean up and I'll be right back. Uh, so let me bring this back. And I'll let that sit to dry. And then for the other one, let's see what we have here. Again, this is just a five and a half by four and a quarter paper. I don't know if I'm going to trim it down or what I'm going to do with it. But for now, uh, let's see. There's something there. And let's try out. Can we try that beige? Why not? I really like that. I think with the kind of roaring 20s feel, why not? So let's, I'm just putting it right down the center here. So I'm going to stick that down. Nope. Oh, need another one. Let's use this. I'm just going to take some of this as the texture paste. So it doesn't have glitter. It's just something that adds texture <laughs> and color and interest that way. So I put it here and I'm just going to bring it down. Again, I'm pretty much using them right now in a way that's, you know, pretty solid. But I do like to be a little artsy when you just kind of do a little bit and a little bit somewhere else or however. But today we're doing something different. For me, at least. <laughs> Just filling that in. Okay, and then that extra, we can keep wiping it down and get the rest of that off. For now, I'm just going to pick that up. Look at that gorgeous background. I'm going to let these dry probably overnight, so um, I'm not going to mess with them again because I might cut them down or do whatever I'm going to do. So I'm going to put both these guys to the side. The texture paste does take a little bit longer to dry. It doesn't take overnight, but I'm going to leave it that way. This stuff, the glitter paste, usually takes like 10 or 15 minutes, but I wouldn't try to die cut it at that point. You know, if you're going to die cut it, you definitely want it to sit overnight. Uh, but it feels pretty dry to the touch after 10, 15, you know, 20 minutes. You can hit them with the heat tool. Don't get too close because it'll bubble up unless that's what you want, right? You want that texture. Cool. But if not, kind of far, far away, hit it with the heat tool, okay? But I'll be back. Okay, guys, so it has been overnight. And in the meantime, sorry, one of my nails broke a little bit, so I shaped them in a different way, so they look totally different from the intro, but there you go. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, with this one is go ahead and uh, cut it down, and I'm just going to take a little bit off the top and the bottom and the sides, just so it's like more of a matte layer. So four and eighth by five and three eighths is what I like, so I'll just cut that down for that. And this one, I think I'm going to do like strips or something. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so what I was thinking about is go ahead and making a matte layer. So I'm going to cut it down so that it's only five and three eighths inches tall, and then I think. If I try to mat that onto another piece and have these strips, I think I'm going to cut one and an eighth. We'll see about that. Let me just cut it down to begin with, and then we'll see what I want to do. I was thinking about doing like panels, basically. So I'll be right back. So coming on matte layers again, I cut this one down four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and I'm just going to simply glue that down. So this is the uh, you know 1920s inspired one. Um, so I'm just going to glue that down. But this one, I was kind of playing around. I wanted to do panels, like three panels, but it kind of gave me a headache doing the math. So I have this beautiful paper here that I had cut down to four and eighth by five and three eighths. So I'm just going to glue that down. Then I cut this one down to a quarter inch smaller than that. So it is five and an eighth by three and seven eighths. And I was simply going to cut this in half. But again, you know, the math isn't quite two inches. If I was to cut it in half, I would have to really think about that one. So what I'm going to do is kind of eyeball a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit more off of this end. Um, just because. <laughs> and then that makes it closer to three and three quarters and if I cut that in half we have let's say one let me do some math I'll be right back. Okay, so if I cut this in half I'm gonna do about one and seven eighths and again I'm just kinda eyeballing it'll be negligible so maybe just a little bit less than one and seven eighths but right around there oh actually that's kinda right down the center almost of that where it kind of I'll just show you right now where that stenciling ends so okay so uh, I'm going to do is just glue this one down and then I'm just going to center these and glue them in the center here. Just like that. 
and that's kind of how I split the difference. Again, I didn't really do math. I kind of just eyeballed it more for the most part. So I have these two panels that I love the way it looks. So I will be right back. So I have uh, some paper here. This is alcohol ink marker paper. We're going to use that in just a minute. Um, so we have that card and we have this one. I love the way they came out. Uh, let me give you some measurements again because I think it was probably a little, a little bit confusing. Um, so my matte layer is five and three eighths by four and an eighth, right? That background green piece. And then these guys are, oh, let's say five and an eighth inches tall. All right, both of them. And then the width is just the part that was a little bit funky. It It's a, basically one and seven eighths inches wide. This one might be a little bit smaller. Yeah, this one's just a slight bit smaller, but it's hard to tell. So that's what I did. Okay, so hopefully those numbers are easier to follow. Um, okay, so for the Roaring Twenties card, I think what I'm going to do is... Let me see. I have the lady on there, I think. So we're going to stamp her again, color it in. So the alcohol ink marker paper on that one. We have her and maybe the happy birthday. Um, I don't know if we're going to do white and white. And I don't need this on here. So I'm just trying to plan out my card. Okay, so we have that. And then for the other one... Oh, you know what? Well, yeah. Okay, so for this one, we'll have the happy birthday, but we'll put it inside one of these kind of labels, one of them. Um, I want the lava lamp for sure. And then we have the little flowers. Now, you can stamp these on, like, tone on tone, like if you did, you know, orange flowers on orange paper, things like that. Um, it could also just be white, you know, background like this kind of thing. So I'm trying to decide that. Maybe we'll just bring in some colors so we can wait on that one. So basically for this one, that's all I need on the alcohol ink marker paper is this lady here and this lava lamp here. And I'll stamp both of these with some hybrid ink so that we can color them. Okay, I'll be back. So stamped, and I'm just going to wait for them to dry a little bit because um, when you use a hybrid ink and you're using alcohol ink markers, you want that dried completely. So I'll clean up a little bit and we'll come back and color these guys in and Go from there. I just grabbed a ton of colors. Um, I may not use them all. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to use them all, but I just wanted to be able to see everything at once. So for this guy, obviously lava lamps have lots of different colors, lots of fun things. Um, I was thinking about mixing the color up so that the liquid is a color and also the um, oily part. And I don't know which one's which, which one has a suspension that doesn't mix into the water or however. But I have rose light and rose dark here. And I think what I'm going to do is color this part. For the most part, you know, maybe I'll use the other side for these smaller areas, just a little something. And then I'm going to go in with the dark. And you guys know, I just, I'm interested in adding some color. I'm not super into making things look super realistic, but you know, nicely colored, hopefully. Let me finish this guy up since I opened the small side. And then our lady, I have some other colors obviously for her. And just bring that around here. And a little bit, oops. And this is gonna be super simple. So we have that. And then I want like a bluish color. I was thinking about teal. Okay, so teal light and teal medium. My teal light is very, very light. It's almost non-existent. So I'm just gonna go in for this one here. Um, I don't know where my teal dark is. That's one of my issues right now. So I'm going to use, and this might be funky, a sapphire medium. Just adding in And also I'll go through with this guy. I can tell I haven't really used this color too much because the nib is really stiff like it was brand new. So anyhow, I'm just going to go in here. And I'll just finish coloring that in. Sorry guys, there's a little few errors i got to get around so it takes a little care there. All right.
Alright, there we go. Looking good. And then the gray on here, I'm just going to use, or what I was going to color silver. This is a blender, that's not it. Ash Light. And here we go. Uh, ash Medium, Light and Dark. And, you know, like I said, there's never too much rhyme or reason with what I do. So the darkest one, I'm going to bring it around here. And then maybe a little bit of medium. And then maybe blend it out. Oop, that's not the side I want. And here we go. And I'm just blending all that out. And that is my lava lamp for our groovy card. And the other one, of course, just coloring it in. I think I grabbed reds, that's right, for the dress over here on this gal. And so I'll color in the dress, you know, again, light, medium, dark, you know, combinations. I have neutral, and I always like to use the neutral from a dime press for like skin tones. So I'll just go in and color all that in, give her a little matching feather, you know, color in her shoes. But um, I'll have some music and a little bit fast forward on that one, and I'll be right back. something white I use like very soft gray or light blue to kind of accent that to make it look like it's been colored but just you know it's white um, I did like the darkest gray on her shoes so they look almost black like shiny but at the same time not completely just black where it's hard to kind of blend out um, I'm gonna put away these markers because what I want to do is the stamping the final stamping for like our little flowers and things before I start cutting other things out but I will be right back so we have those guys and I just grab some scraps of paper I don't think they need to be much bigger than just these little scraps here blue yellow and pink for our flowers from our little set here this guy and you know I'll just grab a few of these I think there's dyes for all of them so let's say pink maybe this one will be yellow <laughs> just like that pink and yellow see how easily influenced I am and blue on this one all right and you can definitely use a stamp positioner I'm just gonna go for it so I'm gonna do tone on tone so I have like blue here really get that inked up since I'm just going for it there we go blue yellow and pink I'll do the same for the other two and I'll be right back finish up our groovy card before I move on to the other one I'll put that there um, so this guy, I'm going to run this through, and I can see pretty well on either side, but if you want to make sure it's perfectly, you know, on those lines, you can definitely make yourself a uh, an aperture, tape that down, I'll put another piece of tape here, and then I'll grab the little uh, flowers for these other guys, and let's see... I think this one is probably the one for this guy. Yep. And again, you can see through there pretty well. Just put some tape, so we have that one. This one has little skinnier ends, but it looks like maybe it's this size. Yep. 
Uh, that one might be hard to see. It is tone on tone. And then the smaller guy that has five edge, uh, five petals is this one, I believe. Yep, and I'll run this through and I'll be right back. That guy is perfect. Perfect. All right, <laughs> I'll keep so working. this one, we have some little flowers. Put these back up. And then we need our sentiment. So I just want to show you kind of what I was thinking. Some of these guys back here and there, however, and then maybe our sentiment or however. We're going to set that up in just a moment. Look at that. Cute. Okay. I will be right back. Okay, so we have something like that. I'm going to take some orange ink and obviously we have I Love a You Lots, which is the pun for that one. It would be really great. I'm going to do the good vibes. You have you know, good vibes coming your way or whatever it is you would want to do. I'm just going to do good vibes and... And then I think I'm going to fussy cut that. I mean, you can do it straight, you know, with a die or something, or just cut it straight. But I think I'm going to stamp that. Looks very cool, very groovy. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just fussy cut this guy. So, what I mean by that is I'm going to go around and get kind of close and just kind of follow the contours. I mean, it doesn't have to be super exact, but just something like, you know, just following these little nooks and crannies, right? And then from this one, obviously over to this one. And I'll just go around the whole thing like that, just leaving the smallest edge. And again, with fussy cutting what you want to do is apply pressure with the hand that's holding the scissors and then your non-dominant hand turning your paper so you get nicer curves and edges like that one's kind of way out I'll probably come back and get that a little bit closer but for now let's come around here and just keep going okay guys let's bring that back I think that looks really cute I'm probably gonna put some dimensionals on that so I'll do it right now let me see what I have here now we'll have that ready let me see what I mean. did I eyeball that pretty well <gasps> look at that oh my gosh my husband's always like how do you see things you just know? Because we'll go by, like, let's say, a little accent piece or a little piece of furniture or whatever it is. And I'm like, no, that's not going to fit there. Or I'm pretty sure it's going to fit. And he's usually the one that's like, it's not going to fit. I'm like, this will be fine. And then it is. And I'm like, I don't know. I just have, <laughs> I think after a while, you just have a good eye of visualizing things. So I'm going to put glue mostly on this side because I don't really know where I'm going to tuck these other ones in right here. And maybe that guy just there. And we'll tuck that in here. Maybe a little further back. This guy can also be tucked back in there. And this one can be on top. That's not to say I always have good eye on that sometimes I'm wrong but hardly ever <laughs> let's try it that way and it looks pretty cute maybe I need to straighten this guy out a little bit okay and good vibes and that will be our card and you guys thanks for going on the journey we tried out lots of different things and you know, waited overnight for this to be nice and dry again. That way I can, you know, die cut it, cut it, cut it. Um, a lot of times you might think something's dry and it's not quite dry underneath and then, you know, you might ruin it. So definitely have some patience when you're playing with texture paste and things like that. I love this card. <laughs> this is so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, and now time for a completely different style. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm debating where I want to stamp this and like this. Um, if I just want to use white paper or not. Let me think about that for a second, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and run this guy through just so we have our gal so we can kind of see where it is that we want to place her better. Um, let me... I want to 
to see if it's easy. It's not the easiest thing to make sure we're on point there. So what I'm going to do is take a scrap of paper like this yellow paper. Okay, I made that big enough. And what we're going to do is make ourselves a little guiding window a little aperture. So I'm going to put that there. Oh, am I at the end of this? No, not quite. Okay. This is bigger than I thought I would <laughs> use. And what happens is I'll run this through. And then uh, we'll be able to use that to see where we're cutting exactly. So let me run this through. And usually what I do is I try to find a piece of the die that's the longest or like flattest or straightest, you know. So we have this gal. If we wanted to drop shadow, I could have cut a color that would have helped me with that. Um, oh, that'd be cute, maybe. We'll see. Uh, so, I have it here, and all I'm going to do is hinge it open. You're not going to remove it. You just want to open it up enough so that you can see exactly where you're cut if you place that back down. Right? So I can see that. This one's a little bit tight because of the design of the die. That looks pretty good. I'm going to push that back down. There's actually a little tape there that's going to help me hold her down, so I think that's good enough. If you want to put some more tape, you can definitely do that. Let's hope that that'll do the trick. And that way we have kind of more of an idea where we're going to cut, right? Ooh, careful. And look at that. Perfect. Okay, uh, let me think about the colorway I want to do with our um, label. And I'll be right back. So I have just some white paper here. I think I'm going to do the happy birthday, I don't know, the banner part of it, like the um, outline there. This is just regular heavyweight white, white paper um, with some gold ink with the gold embossing powder so it really maxes out that gold. And I'll put that there. And then we'll do our sentiment in just a bit, but first I'm going to do this. Some gold pigment ink. And that could have just been clear watermark ink too because I'm going to use gold powder on top of this. That looks really nice. Okay. And then some gold embossing powder. Just on top of that. Try to get that on there nicely. Oh. Let's see. There we go. Tap off the excess a little bit. If you have any else that you want to get rid of, a lot of times I use my little brush super delicately just to get rid of everything else. I did use an anti-static pad at the beginning, but um, didn't do the best job of applying that. Okay. I'm going to hit that with the heat tool and I'll be right back. Cool off a little bit. I'm going to put this back into the um, jar, clean off my stamp, and I'll be right back. Clean that up. Got this back down again. This time I'm going to the happy birthday. I really want that paper to stay down. So what happens is when you hit your paper with the heat tool, it gets a little warped, a little funky. And I mean, that's typical. But I'm going to do this. And you could have stamped this first and then the other, but uh, I wanted to keep those inks separate from each other as far as maybe having to really wait for this to dry, you know, before we smear it with the um, anti-static pouch and all that kind of stuff. So I was just doing it in two separate um, phases here. And so there we go. Wow, so crisp and pretty. Look at that. Hold on. Let's get this guy here. And I mean, so pretty. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take, I believe it's this guy. And again, if I don't know that it's really eyeballed real well, I'm just going to make myself an aperture. And I think I'm also going to run through the lady one more time through some gold paper just so I have a drop shadow for her, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I didn't make myself an aperture, and I was glad to do that. It is very close to the edges, which is really nice. And then I run this one through some gold for our lady here, and I'm thinking we drop shadow her something like that, so we have like that little bit coming off of her. And, oopsie, let's just get some of this on here. Cute, okay. So we have that looking awesome. I'll probably pop her up 
and then our happy birthday up here. And we can also pop that up if you want to, but I think I'm going to pop her up and then maybe use some um, gems or something. I don't know. But let's put this over here. Let me get some dimensionals on her and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we have our gal here. I love the gold behind her. The accent looks really nice. We have that stenciling, of course, the texture paste. And then we have our happy birthday. She just noticed I'm a little bit crooked. That's okay. All right. And we'll pop her down here. And just to finish it off a little bit, I'm going to add um, some of these rhinestones. Unfortunately, I think this particular set is sold out on HSN, but, you know, um, Diamond Press always has lots of gorgeous things. I was going to use the red and the gold, but it's more of a yellow gold, isn't it? Well, we'll see. So I'm just going to pop some of these on there. And that is it, guys. So thanks for watching, uh, you know, going through some of these new items and pairing some of these guys up. Um, hope uh, you got some nice tips there how to use the, um, the stenciling paste, possibly, and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll have images coming up, and I'll have links in the description box, and I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.